So, I played Pokemon Sword and Shield here for the Nintendo Switch. I started with Sword, that's the one I got initially, and then I got Shield later to help complete the Pokedex. Uh, you know, a lot of people are saying these games are terrible or whatever, or, or that the trees don't look very good or whatever, and it's like, for me, I don't give a shit about any of that, you know, like, fuck all of that. I mean, I get their points, I get that the whole you know, national decks thing, and if anybody should be pissed about the national decks, it's me, my friends, because I am the one who in 2016 sat down before Sun and Moon came out, I think 2015 actually, before Sun and Moon came out, it's, it's like, even before they were announced, I think, I, I just sat down and I'm like, dude, I need to collect every single fucking Pokemon starting with Generation 3, and I did it. Uh, I would show it to you, but I don't want to sign into my Nintendo 3DS account because I probably would have to change my password. But I have a full living dex of every Pokemon, and I started with Generation 3, got all of them, and then went to Soul Silver and, and um, Heart Gold. I started with Heart Gold. I think I needed some from Soul Silver or something, so I, I did that. I did Generation 4, did Generation 5, had to do the stupid mini games to transfer them up each time it took forever but i had time i had time between my classes in college and i did it and i did 2016 before sun and moon came out i had a complete pokedex and it was crazy and it was awesome and i still have it but it's all worthless now and i get it i get why that's a problem because if anybody should be pissed about the the whole national dex thing it's me because i have a full living dex i'm one of you you know i'm here i get it but also, they can't put every Pokemon in every game forever and have it be interesting. Where are they going to spawn all of those Pokemon in the wild to make things interesting? Now, the wild is already overpopulated enough with Pokemon as is. It is ridiculous how many Pokemon there already are in this game, like 400. And it's never felt like more cramped with Pokemon as it does right now. You know, I mean, I mean, you know, some, some of them just show up in certain... Uh, times and certain weather conditions and stuff but it's like imagine all of the stress they would have to go through to just change around even more things like nearly triple the amount of pokemon uh that they'd have to put in there and the weather conditions and stuff they'd have to account for where the locations to get the pokemon how to even make that interesting to get the pokemon I know what people are going to say is like all right well then have the galar decks just be filled with the 400 new Pokemon plus all the Pokemon, which basically the Pokemon decks that we have now, and then just let us transfer in all their other Pokemon, but it's like, you, that's like, that's like almost double or triple the Pokemon, probably nearly triple the Pokemon at this point, um, that you would have to put in the game and, and have everything functional and all the animations and whatnot, which I know they have most of them, but it would just be a really time consuming and a really money consuming thing now i know pokemon is like the biggest franchise or whatever like of all time but like they've got all the money to do this now i agree that they should probably hire some more um people to help out with the whole thing because i want a great pokemon game just as much as anybody but let me tell you sword and shield here are a great pokemon game because i think that these games are the best pokemon games since generation three and if anybody knows the high praise that i give towards gen one here it's like one of my favorites, Gen 2, which is my favorite, and then Generation 3, which I fell in love with while playing the, uh, to, to get all the Pokemon, my, my full Pokemon Living Dex journey that I did in 2016, I uh, kind of fell in love with the game then, so if anybody knows what they're talking about then, you know, I played through 4 and 5 and, and 6 back then, and I like 6, I think 4 and 5 is just, just kind of okay, um, uh, and then 7, I, I'm not really a big fan of. I, I think that 7 and 5 are probably the two weakest generations. Number 4, I would like to see what they do with the remake to see if it's uh, if it can catch my attention. It seemed like a pretty cool generation, and I can't give that generation too much shit because they actually had the remakes of my favorite games in Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver. So Generation 4 gets a pass on that angle. Uh, generation 6 had the Hoenn remakes, they were kind of like, eh, you know, this so-so. Um, not bad, though. Those are pretty good, but I still like the original games better, I think. Um, but X and Y, I really do still genuinely enjoy as the fifth best now uh, Pokemon um, 
uh, generation. So, yeah, I mean, I think these games are fantastic. I think that they're not, they, they don't quite have the same magic that the old, the first three generations have, but they're very close to that same magic as the first three generations, uh, I would say, because uh, th- that was kind of the problem for me. Four, five, and seven lost a lot of that magic that I think that the first uh, three generations of Pokemon had. I think six got a little of that back, and then this game, these two games definitely got like a lot of that back, like most of that back. So, I mean, I'm really excited to see what they do with Pokemon in the future. If anything, this is the proof of concept to show that they can um, have such a cool game and they have this whole wild idea, which is very innovative and new and and, uh, quite a cool thing for Pokemon. Uh, I think my one other big complaint with the game would be the fact that if it were me, I would have put in... and, and, And Okay, this is like, you know, this is... This is just leading up to maybe that, but I would have put in maybe the first three gems like they did, a fire and a grass and a water just to kind of have the starter thing. And then from there, what if, kind of like the first game, because you could do this in the first game if you didn't know, and maybe even in the second game you had a little bit of choice on this. I think you pretty much did. There's like three gems that you could choose between in the second game. You didn't really do that in the third game or the fourth game or any of the other ones, but what if we had an open world sort of Pokemon game where um, from the from the get-go, the first three gyms are set up in such a way that, uh, you know, do the thing where you could still access the wild before the first gym, because that's cool, because then you can get that out of the way, and that's great. But do a thing where once you finish the first three gyms, you have a choice between the last... Uh, Let's just even say the last four gyms, and then you can have the eighth one be like a very set location like they usually do, kind of like one of the starting towns or, you know, whatever, kind of like they usually do like Viridian City or, or in this game it was the, uh, uh, was it Modestoke or whatever where you fight the, the, the gym leader, the dragon one, have that be there, like, kind of like that, um, but give us some options, give us some freedom of choice in which direction we kind of want to go, and just scale the levels to be sort of, uh, let's just even say the first one you go to can be, you know, these levels to these levels, like 30 to 40, whatever, and then the next set can be the 40 to 50 gym, and then the next set can be the 50 to 60 gym, or however that wants to work. You know, you make the levels the same as you would uh, generally, but... The idea is that you have the freedom to choose from that point which gyms you want to do in which order, which I think would really enhance the game and making it a little more free and uh, compatible sort of with the ideas of the old generations where you could kind of uh, do your own thing and have a little bit of freedom. And uh, they're definitely introducing that with this wild concept where you go into the wild area and have all these Pokemon. You're limited by your gym badges, which kind of sucks. But I get why they did that also. I I feel like that's a good idea and a bad idea at the same time. Because you see these Pokemon, you want to catch these Pokemon. And if you are, you know, able to somehow catch the Pokemon, you should just be able to have that Pokemon and not be able to control that Pokemon, kind of like the old games. But they didn't do that. They basically made it so you couldn't catch those Pokemon and then you just couldn't catch them. So that, that kind of takes a little bit of the magic out of it. But it was fine. It was done well enough, um, I think. So, but anyway, you know, like, I think those are some of the biggest flaws of the game. The graphics or whatever aren't necessarily on par with what everyone wanted, but everyone's saying, oh my god, it's so bad. It looks like the 3DS games. And I'm like, what? Did you guys see these 3D? Are you played Pokemon Sun and Moon or X and Y recently? Like, they don't look that great compared to, like, this game, which looks, like, really good in some areas. I get that the trees and the textures or whatever. You know why they didn't, like, make the trees look really that great? Because... They didn't think anybody was going to make this big of a fuss about fucking trees. I get that they're everywhere, but it's like, 
It's so stupid that people are making such a big fuss about these tree textures. And even Game Freak, Freak thought this, and they're like, well, they're not going to care about the trees. Let's make, let's put the effort into the Pokemon and the roaming sprites on the overworld and the battle animations and stuff. And it's like, no, we care about the trees, Game Freak. We care about those. You know, it's like, fuck, people. Come on, get over this shit. Who cares? But anyway, some people have priorities that are different than mine. I don't know. I mean, these are just nitpicks, and these have been the biggest criticisms towards the game. People are just trying to say that these games are terrible because of stuff like that. It's like, no, but the gameplay in the, the all that is still really good and it's still really fun. So, like, I get that people still probably think this is a little bit too easy, but I don't think this was quite as easy as Sun and Moon and also Gen uh, 6, X and Y and all that. I mean, yeah, especially not as easy as Let's Go. I mean, I mean that was a great game, but... It was a little too easy. If, if that would have had, like, a difficulty setting, you know, that would have been, uh, like, a really good game. But, anyway, so, yeah, I think that these games were great. And I think the difficulty is fine. Here, here's what I learned, playing it twice. So, first time around, I did a lot of grinding in the wild area, not intentionally. Catching Pokemon kind of grinds and stuff, and that's fine. But, uh, what the idea is that uh, I was going around and I was just trying to explore the world and, you know, have a really interesting and uh, unique first experience by trying to catch as many Pokemon as I can and trying to do all this stuff and all this and that and all that. So that got me a little too powerful. I kind of just breezed through the game. Uh, I had a few troubles here and there, but, like, it wasn't that much. Playing it through the second time on Pokemon Shield, the other thing that I found out was... Um, that if you don't do that and you just kind of go through the game and don't sidetrack yourself too much then the challenge and the difficulty is pretty fine you know it's, it's actually moderately challenging you're gonna die every now and again to stuff as long as you just kind of go through the story you just defeat all the trainers and whatnot and just don't go and try to like complete your pokedex before you even finish the game which isn't even going to be possible to begin with because you're gated off by certain weather, being blocked behind certain gym badges, and, and regardless, you're not going to be able to catch certain Pokemon because you don't have certain gym badges, because they're too high of a level, etc., etc. So, my uh, advice to somebody playing this for the first time is maybe just get through the story as fast as you can. I mean, as fast as you can. Just, I mean, experience the story, experience the storyline, which, um, you know, and it, uh, well, I'll talk about that in a second. And then, just um, then have your journey of going and catching the Pokemon. Now, catch the Pokemon that you want along the way. Like, um, I guess I could show it off here, but I have my team uh, that I caught in Pokemon Sword. I basically kept the same team the whole time. So, um, as you can see there, this is another cool thing. Once you finish the, um, the, the, uh, the league, it actually puts you on the title screen. I th thought that was just so cool. See, there's my trainer. This is Isabel as... Uh, you know, that's my bit, my Pokemon person since the uh, the beginning of my 2006 six journey. I named all the characters that and everything. There's my Caparaja and my uh, Ladybug Pokemon. I don't remember the name of. I, I know the name. I just don't remember it. My Bolton and my uh, starter there, a little Grookey who I nicknamed um, Boomy, who, you know, because uh, Avatar and the the coal guy. I don't remember what, what, the, what the name is for that guy. And then... Um, the bird core night. So yeah, basically I ca I went and got these poke. A lot of these came from like the first route. Obviously I got my starter at the beginning. Uh, the ladybug Pokemon I got near the beginning, uh, and you know other stuff like that. Let's look. Let's take a look at the Pokemon actually. Let's go into the game here quick and take a look at my team. Uh, but yeah, basically like. Actually, I've got grinding mode on. But basically, you know, while I was playing the game, I basically just got what Pokemon I was going to get. And then, oh, I already, see, I already kind of put them in the, so here, let's take a look at the, the living next quick. So I, I finished this. Uh, let's just, this is all of the Pokemon. Living next means one of each Pokemon in one of each form, which kind of sucks when you, like, you, there's only, there's some of them where you can only get one in the game, like, um... Uh, what is it? Fucking type null or whatever. You can get one per game, so I had to go into shield and get the other one. All right, so there's my living decks. Um, okay, here's actually, yeah, here we go. 
Rillaboom, that was the guy's name. But um, here's uh, here was my team. That's Boomy. There's uh, my Bolton, and we got my Corviknight there. Him and then where's the other two? Okay, Caparaja here. Uh, Wilbert, named by Gerard the Completionist. Uh, when we were at his thing there, we went to one of his um, God, what is that called? The Completionist. I don't know live show thing and um, I got him to name that for me he named, he went in here and named it for me so uh, let me see so and then on my shield oh there's a uh, there's my ladybug I called her Marinette after ladybug of course and then I don't know if I have all of my shield team here but there's my Alice my uh my, oh, here let's uh my Pultigeist and my uh, Galarian Rapidash, who I named Twilight after Twilight Sparkle, of course. Uh, my oh, my Spider Gwen there, <laughs> Dupider Evolution, or is Dupider? I don't remember. Whichever one that is. Uh, and then who else did I use on my Galarian team? I don't think I have them sitting here, the other two. But anyway. So basically, I went through the... Oh, yeah, because it's, uh... There's, uh, Vivian, my Tyranitar. And, uh... Where is my Gudra? There it is. Gloober, my Gudra. So, yeah, basically... Um, there was my teams for both of the games. And, uh, yeah, in Sword, I, I thought the team... So what I like to do with Pokemon games is I like to start... Uh, the first one that I do through a Pokemon game, uh, and you know, anymore, is I'll take all, all new Pokemon on my journey with me. That way I can experience some of the new Pokemon and kind of go with that and roll with that and try to figure out my favorites and whatnot. Um, basically what ended up happening is I caught like four of those on the first route, just stuck with them the whole game. And then um, I think the only ones was Caparaja and the... The Cole one, I don't remember his name, but the him, I, I caught him in that, uh, in the root, uh, in the, in the mine, I think. I catch him before the mine or something, I don't remember, around there. I caught him, and then, I think you catch him in the mine, right? Yeah, you catch him in the mine. So I caught him there, and then, uh, the, the Caparage I caught later in the wild, which I was trying to catch all, the whole time, but... I was restricted by my badges for, like, the first, like, four badges or something. It was ridiculous. But anyway, um, actually, I think it was only the first two, because I think the fire leader who was was, was uh, the one I was on, um, we went to see the completionist thing, and we were hanging out with them and whatnot. So, but anyway, so I did that. Uh, my friend Nick helped me uh, complete uh, by trading me, and I traded him and that kind of thing, and uh, he got his full decks too he didn't have a living decks but i mean both of us to do that that'd be pretty hard he would have had to have both games too which just he didn't care about that he just wanted to get the pokedex finished so yeah basically um i don't know where i was going with that i just wanted to show off my my team and stuff so that was cool um i had a lot of fun assembling that team and going through the game with just that team and then the second time around i kind of was like okay well i need a gudra i need a tyranitar so I might as well just take those with me on my journey and then level them up naturally. So I did that. I, I went and got um, grinded for a perfect, perfect stats uh, Gumi and a... I mean, I don't think they were perfect stats. They were amazing stats, you know, in the game. So it's like there were a few different IVs that were like, you know, pretty good, like perfect or best or whatever. So Gumi and then a, a Ty Tyranitar. What's the... God, I always forget... Under pressure, I forget the names. The, the um, the little one. God, I can only think of Pupitar, which is the second evolution, right, or whatever. I'm trying to think what the grunt is called. Oh well. Who okay, cares? So you know what I'm talking about. And then uh, I wanted to try Poltergeist because, um, well, um, Sinisty was. I I really like that Pokemon. I really like it's shiny. I don't know about Poltegeist and it's shiny, but I'm going to try to get it eventually. Um, I really liked the idea of those Pokemon. They were cute, so I was like, all right, I'm going to get those, and then I'm going to go through the game with one of those. I have to pick another starter. I was going to do the Cinder Cinderace, uh, so 
I start with Score Bunny because I usually start with the fire starter. This time was marks the first time. If you watched my 2016 Pokemon video before Sun and Moon came out, it was actually the day after Sun and Moon came out because I had to edit it and shit. But um, I always choose the fire starter, and it was surprising this time. I'm like, Score Bunny's cool and all, but I kind of want to choose this Grookey guy and mix it up, you know, because I thought. Um, it was pretty cool, so I did that finally. I finally have chosen a grass starter. Um, it was just strange. But anyway, um, so yeah, that was pretty cool. And then, so I liked, yeah, so, so I chose uh, Square Buddy on my second time around. And then also I had a, who else? I just showed, oh, the Rapidash. I had to do the Clarion Ponyta and Rapidash because that was great. And so yeah, so that was uh, my team for. Oh, sorry for um. Oh, and the Dewpider. Cause I I don't know, just cause I needed a bug and water type, and there's not a lot of water types that looked like significantly cool. Um, a lot of them I was thinking were to be water type, like Delmize or just like mostly grass type and steel and stuff. And I'm just like, eh, I don't know about that. Um, I think that was the significant thing that was lacking on my second playthrough though was a steel to to counter the fairy, but. Uh, yeah, cause, cause that that ended up being pretty tough for me. But anyway, so my point is the difficulty. If you go through the game and you just kind of go through the story and you don't worry about all the side stuff to begin with, is actually uh, fairly good. So I would recommend doing that if you're looking for a Pokemon challenge, or you could you know put your self-imposed challenges, your Nuzlocks and whatnot on there. So that's pretty cool on um, that kind of stuff. So the, the the beauty of the game is it's so diverse in the fact that you can just kind of do whatever now and this is why i think that the wild is a great idea but i don't really necessarily like the gym badge idea because what if i want to go into the wild and i find a pokemon and i'm like man that would be so cool to take that pokemon with me initially on my pokemon journey you know like i haven't even gotten to the first gym yet and let's say i see like i don't know like the the kufant or the caparaja you know i mean you're probably gonna kufant first before the Caparaja, but why can't I have that before the first gym? Or, I mean, I don't know, like, before the second gym. Or the, I mean, I guess you can get it before the third gym, but it's just like, most of that stuff should be available to me. I get that the bigger Pokemon, like the Steelix and stuff, should be maybe locked away, but I think they can just balance that a little better, and then, I don't know. I mean, I know they locked a lot of Pokemon behind, like, water hazards and stuff so like you can't get over the water without the proper bike and stuff by the way the bike system i think that's um perfect i think that's exactly what they need to do from now on just have sort of a bike like that even in a region with water maybe they can just get the bike to turn into like a jet ski or something i don't know man just like that was perfect they that's so good that's exactly what they need to do every time um if they want to do more ride pokemon that's cool but it's just like this worked so well. The bike system, get rid of all the HMs. You, you have a bike system. It's perfect. I know that the region was probably a little smaller than a lot of people wanted. Um, I know that the, a big complaint was the routes weren't as long as they could have been. But, like, I, I agree with that to some degree. But also, uh, I mean, I don't want the routes to be super, super long. Or I, I think the caves and the dungeons, I think th we needed more of that. You know, like more dungeons and caves to go through kind of like uh like in the first game you have cerulean cave which is a really great dungeon i really would have liked something like that in the post game or just even within the story of the game would have been cool there wasn't really like a like a team rocket kind of area which would have been cool like a like a base but i know they're trying new things in this game so i don't blame them for that i, I know this is just kind of like the first game on the switch other than let's go i mean let's go is a remake and a very very simplified uh remake of, of gen one i mean it's technically more chance than gen one but you know what i'm saying uh they, they took a lot of the mechanics and just cut them down to to be more casual which is cool it's a great game i love let's go i just i think that this was the right way to balance the let's go crowd with the uh the new you know the, the old the old uh older sort um before pre sword and shield and let's go all the old fans um also but you know, okay, so let's talk about the Pokemon quick. So, I do have one kind of complaint. I mean, I have a lot of complaints about that, but not a ton of complaints, but, like, I have a few complaints. So, you know, like, 
I found myself looking at the list of Pokemon, like, let's say, like, Delibird and all the Gen 5 Pokemon, except for Maractus, of course. Maractus has its own problem. I'll talk about it in a second here. But, like, Delibird and all the Gen 5 Pokemon, it's like, if you're going to put these Pokemon in here, and the one-off Pokemon especially, Delibird, Maractus, etc., you gave Corsal an evolution, why not give Maractus an evolution, uh... I mean, it's a great Pokemon. Just give it an evolution already, you know? If you're going to throw it in the game, when else are we going to get a Maractus again in the game? You're not going to give it an evolution? You're not going to give Delibird an evolution or a pre-evolution or a, I don't know, a Galarian, you know, Dynamax or Gigantamax form or something? Something. Give us something. A new form of Pokemon. It's kind of sad that, like, Megas and stuff are, are not in the game because... That was a great way to just kind of give old Pokemon new forms. Um, and that kind of satisfied the, like, not evolution kind of thing or whatever. So, I, I just think we need more new evolutions for old Pokemon. Now, they're doing that, which is great. Mr. Vine got an evolution, which is great. I mean, um, I didn't use him much or anything, but I, I thought it was really cool that he got an evolution. Uh, Corsola was another one that everyone was like, we need an evolution for this for, like, a long time a uh, far-fetched sir-fetched is another evolution of far-fetched and it's like holy shit far-fetched finally has an evolution like he was it was one of those so useless one-off pokemon and now he finally has a really cool evolution with sir-fetched i thought that was great i mean we need more of that and and i know you can only do so much with this game and i i'm completely understanding of that but there's so many freaking one-off pokemon that need new evolutions you know they're just it would bring so much new life to these Pokemon, and I think that would just, just be so cool. I have some of my favorites that could use it, like Maractus, you know, would be a really cool one to get an evolution. Uh, a new... Okay, uh, that's the other thing. You have every Eevee in this game. And I think they always do that, but you have every Eevee in this game, and you don't give us new evolutions. Come on, how about BV? As your insect uh, evolution there. A dragon Eevee. That would be so cool. Um, a ghost Eevee. I know it might get a little dark of like how the backstory. But you have other ghost Pokemon that are kind of like that. Like, uh, was it Bayonet or whatever? Where it's like the doll that like got abandoned by its owner. And then it's like in the dump. And, and it gets possessed by a soul. And it's like, oh, I gotta go find him. Um, you know, I gotta go find my owner or whatever. It's like really sad like that, you know? You've got Cubone, who they finally have, like, not finally, but I mean, more recently, and in, in probably by, like, X and Y, they had, like, um, like, finally went on the, the backstory about the whole, you know, dead mother thing or whatever, so they really embraced that, and you know, especially in Let's Go, too, I mean, that was kind of heartbreaking in that game, uh, that whole s part of that game, so, I mean, they, they know how to do dark Pokemon like this, let's, or, like, not, like, the type dark, but ghost Pokemon in that sense, Let's get an Eevee where it has to faint and then... Uh, Sheninja! Sheninja is another Pokemon where it's technically a dead uh, Pokemon. I mean, so, you know, it's a ghost and an insect, right? So, like, let's get another Sheninja in an Eevee evolution where it becomes ghost type. I think that'd be so cool. I think that'd be a really cool one. You, you basically left all the best types for last. I mean, the types that we have are pretty good and they're basic and obviously the whole fairy type and all that, but and i get that there's like a pattern to it or whatever but we need more evolutions all right that's something that's one of my complaints i guess but um other than that though i mean i really enjoyed the story and the battling i mean the story is lacking let's okay let's talk about that quick so um the whole thing is like it starts off really strong you meet the legendary right and then you um you kind of have the story, and then when you get to the wild area, it just kind of falls off, and then every time the story comes up, you're just, like, kind of not a part of it. Like, they're like, oh, don't worry about it. We'll take care of it or whatever. You know, so that's a little bit disappointing, but also, I understand what they're doing here because, like, it, believe me, if anybody would complain about... <laughs> I mean, I think you complain about it in, like, X and Y and, like... Um, and Sun and Moon and stuff. But in Sun and Moon, the story is just so overbearing. I don't even barely remember the game because I, all I can remember is getting ran into every five seconds, you know, all my rivals and, and not rivals, but like uh, my one rival would always bump into me and all the story would just come crashing down on me the whole time. It's like, 
I like that we're back to more traditional gyms as well. So traditional, not to say traditional because the gyms are actually uh, more so different now. Let's talk about those quick. Uh, so in the gyms, they have new challenges and whatnot, which like they're little mini games and whatnot. And then you fight trainers in between them. And I thought that was great. I thought that was such a cool addition. Um, I definitely like that. I think that's it's the best uh, version of both formulas. You know, you did your... Um, challenges before whatever the island challenges and then you have your typical gym style we don't want to do just the typical gym style again so let's add some flavor to it i thought their solution to gyms was a really cool idea and i hope that they keep doing that in the future i think that's great um so keep that up that's great i think i thought all the gyms were great um the only complaint i would have about maybe the gyms is sometimes they like weren't that challenging because it's like i was just kind of steamrolling through my first playthrough they the second time around they were a lot better but uh in a pokemon selection could have been better sometimes i don't know but anyway so the gyms um were pretty cool but basically as soon as you get past the wild area it, the story just kind of falls off it kind of goes weaves its way in between gyms a little bit but there's not that much of it and especially after you beat, uh, after you do the thing with the, the wall and the, that part, and then it just kind of falls off from there, the whole story, and you just kind of keep completing gyms until you're like, oh, well, I'm at the end now, I guess. And it's like, oh, shit. And then it's like, the story really only picks up again once you're at the Pokemon League or whatever, which uh, also, the Pokemon League, hey, that was pretty cool. How your rivals come in and, like, uh, you know, that was, that was so sick. I mean... Hop was pretty cool. Um, you know, I liked him as a rival. He was still kind of just a typical, like, bad rival in the sense that it's just like, you know, he, he's like the one from the last game uh, where he just, he, he doesn't really know what he's doing. But Hop is at least a little bit competent, and I kind of liked his whole story and then how he caught the legendary. I thought that was pretty cool. And then um, your other bead, is it? Bead? Whatever that one... I know he's supposed to be, like, your Gary Oak or whatever, but it's just, like, you know, or your Blue, I suppose, in the games, but he just doesn't hit that level for me. I know that's what they're trying to do, and I, I applaud you guys trying to put a mean rival in there again. I know they tried that in the last game, too. It was, like, the brother of the of Lily or whatever. I don't remember his name, but... um, Good. Keep doing that, but just make it like the old games. Make it, like, a silver or a blue. Blue, especially... I, I don't understand why we can't just make, like, okay, so, like, in X and Y, they probably had too many rivals, but let's just make, like, a group of three people, one of them is your weak rival, you know, you got your hop, and then you got, uh, more like a bead, like, maybe bead cross and Barney or something, like, those would be two great rivals to, like, put together, and that would be your other rival, you know, or whatever, um, so, I, I think that would be cool, I mean, you know, that would just be cool. I, that's that's all I want. It's just like a rival, kind of like blue or whatever, and then he can be like your competent rival, and you can have the like less competent rival who, who picks like the other starter. You know, like the one that you're weak to. I mean, the one that he, the one that you choose, he'll be weak to that one, and then your good your good rival would actually be the one that's strong to you because they would know the type advantage thing or whatever. Because he kept bringing that up, and I'm just like, well. You should have chose the other Pokemon. Uh, choose the better Pokemon with type advantage if you know about type advantage. Or whatever. But no big deal. But Hop was pretty good. I didn't mind him as a rival. Marnie, she's the best. You know, she's great. Uh, Team Yell is stupid. <laughs> Let's just be real here. Team Yell is really dumb. But um, if we have to have a villain team still, I, I would prefer something more like maybe like a Team Plasma or... Um, Team Rocket or even Team Magma and Aqua were pretty good. Um, I don't even remember what Team Galactic did. They were just trying to get the time and space Dialgia and Palkia or whatever. And um, the third one, whose name I don't remember right now. Sorry, it's it's late. Uh, what the, f the fuck was that guy's name? It's on the top tip of my tongue, but I can't think of it. I'm thinking of the Jed 5 ones, right? Rush Ram and whatever. Anyways, so, um, yeah. Okay, so, and then I guess we can talk about the legendaries quick. I thought the legendaries were pretty good. I don't know about Eternatus, really. I mean, he's cool, but, like, 
He doesn't... I, I don't know. He didn't really seem like the Mewtwo of this generation. Or even even the Zygarde of this generation or whatever. He just didn't seem really connected to the other two. Like, obviously, the other two are, like, dog Pokemon or whatever. And those that's cool. I like that. I think they're really cool. Obviously, I prefer the one with the sword. Uh, just because, like, it's the Dark Souls reference or whatever. I thought that was really sick how they, you know, how he, how he was kind of like that uh like seaf and dark souls or whatever so i named that as well but um but yeah i thought the legendaries are cool it's kind of odd that there wasn't like a trio of roaming legendaries because we didn't have anything like that in this game uh especially with the wild that would have been a really cool addition and maybe they'll do that like in an update or something in the future because there, there has to still be updates and stuff to this game because uh bulbasaur and a bunch of other like pokemon from other games are like in the data of the game so they're like gonna put more pokemon in the game at some point but it's like they've already announced that that all the pokemon aren't gonna be in there and that's fine i mean just if you just release some new pokemon at some point or maybe they are gonna have a roaming legendary trio in the uh, third game which i don't know what's it gonna be called sword shield you know armor helmet i don't know what would you even call it you know like at that point it doesn't this it's hard it's hard to figure out what you're gonna call it but th that's what it's what they're paid for not me so uh or who wonders if they'll even have a third game usually they do sequel games now right like i mean the last time we had a third game they didn't even do it in gen 6 uh they did sequel games last time around with sun and moon then again they did gen 5 had sequel games sun and moon had sequel games but gen 6 had um um just the one game and then gen 4 also had just the one game so maybe there's a pattern here maybe in gen 8 this just generation will have just one game to like kind of tie them together again or maybe they're just done with that i don't know maybe it'll just be the remakes of gen 4 i mean we can only assume what the future of this is so um yeah but the story is pretty good uh, it's kind of weird how it picks up just, like, after the League or whatever, though. Like, wh while the League... Yeah, almost near the end of the Pokemon League. Okay, so I was talking about the Pokemon League. I guess that's something I get to talk about quick. I thought it was cool how you've got you... you got, um... Hop is, like, you know, later on, but you, you fight Marnie first, who I thought was... It's great that you fight her because she's so good. And then... Um... Then you fight the gym leaders again, which is kind of odd. I thought, like, maybe the first time I was playing it, I was like, you just, you like, maybe it was, like, kind of random which ones you were going to fight or whatever. So I got, like, the water one and the, uh, who's the other one you fight? Well, you fight, like, the ghost one or in sh uh, shield, you fight the ghost one and sword, you fight, uh, I think it's one of the other ones. I don't remember who you fight in sword. But anyway. I thought it was kind of random, like, oh, like, maybe they they mix it up at the end, that'd be pretty cool, but now it's just, it's the same ones every time, which is kind of disappointing, like, I, I wish, you know, it would be cool if, like, you just got one of, like, five or six, you know, different ones, so it's like we could see what their teams evolved into, that'd be pretty sweet, um, they didn't do that, so that's fine, and I get it, you don't want to have to program all that stuff, it's, that's fine, they could have done it, you know, that would have been kind of cool, um, this is my point, but, uh, so yeah, so after that, then the story starts to pick up again, and that's like when things kind of get epic and stuff, and it's like you go and you, you do the whole legendaries and all that, and you do the legendaries after the game too and all that. It's just like, why, why, why is this all happening just out of the blue now? I mean, like, I, this is the, a good time for it, but also, you know, when I was finishing the game, I'm like, well, I'm probably going to have to go catch the legendaries. How's that going to go? Or whatever. I mean, I, you know how I was talking about dungeons earlier? I guess the whole thing is like, the forest was kind of like a dungeon per se like both forests was kind of like a dungeon i don't know i mean that's kind of on the right track i think that's good but more of that you know would be uh pretty cool like i don't know let's go inside a volcano again or something it's it's hard because they've already done so many things but it's just like you know like you remember in gen 3 there was always there was like a ton of those kind of dungeons like um you know, especially near the end, there was, like, that cave with the water and all that. There was that sunken ship. There was that, um, you could go through the headquarters and all that, and it, it, it's crazy. Um, even in Gen 2, there's, like, the ice cave, and there's, like, um, 
bunch of caves like that and the water area and then there's like the the sea foam cave it was a lot of caves back then that's how they kind of did those dungeons back then but you know that was a thing that happened back then they don't do those now because the games are more like casual or whatever and i get it like you gotta appeal to the mass already audi- audience audience or whatever which i get so that's cool but i'm just saying like maybe some more dungeons maybe some more complicated things maybe just make it optional you don't have to go there but you can if you want to like get certain pokemon or if you want to get like a roaming legendary pokemon or something you know you, you they don't have to be roaming legendaries they can just be like the other three legendary pokemon like a like the birds and then the you know the dogs or dogs i mean a lot of people say they were like cats in generation two but i always called them the legendary dogs so you know you have your um reggie pokemon yeah those were great dungeons was the reggie dungeons uh that you know those those three pokemon like that have been kind of lost on this generation i thought the uh the fossil thing was kind of interesting how they did like the mixing and matching but the the fossils just look like they want to die like for the most part and it's just kind of terrifying like you know and it, it you feel bad for like a few of them like the one that's like frozen and constantly has a cold and it's just like kill me and you're just like i can't you need you for my living decks and, you know <laughs> it's whatever um it was cool how they did this the the exclusive fossils for each game but then like you can also get them if you want to grind through the um through the, the the guys who keep digging or whatever and that was pretty cool how you have like a rare chance to get the other fossils i thought it was really neat um i like how we don't have like a gts right now um i think that's pretty cool because then surprise trade is a little bit more like relevant you know um but also the trading system isn't necessarily the easiest to do if you're like far apart from each other local trading's pretty easy i mean me and my friend did that a lot of times where you set up a code and just kind of do it that way uh i haven't tried the battling system yet i'm, I'm sure that's pretty good I've seen people play that. That's pretty good. I want to build a team, like a competitive team before I do that. Maybe hunt some shinies and stuff before I get to that stuff. But, um, I mean, overall, I would say that the games are really good because they, they, they still have a lot of the stuff from the old games. Um, they, they pander just enough, which, I mean, I hate when people pander really hard you know like oh look here's a pikachu pikachu's the best pokemon right it's just like uh no he's not (laughs) my opinion i know i'm this guy the best pokemon is charmander oh i know i'm that guy but at least it's charmander not charizard right because everyone loves charizard (laughs) Even the guy in this game, he had a Charizard. They didn't put the other two starters up from Kanto in here, but they had to have Charmander and that Charizard and the Gigantamax Charizard because everyone loves Charizard. And he's the one who got the two mega forums and this and that and, you know, all that stuff. But, uh, you know, I, I like this game. I like a lot of the new Pokemon. I mean, um, shit. I mean, I could just, let's let's comment on the new Pokemon. Let's see. Let's Let's look at the new pokemon like kind of one by one and we'll see um i'll go through the lines of pokemon kind of quickly um i mean let me give a summary of the game first and then we'll just kind of we'll go through the pokemon as as a kind of closing it out kind of thing i think the game's great i think it's really good i think it captures the spirit and the essence uh the music too is also really good uh it captures the spirit and the essence of Pokemon, and I think that's great. I think Gen 7, 6 were... I mean, 6 was pretty good. 7 was kind of lacking. Gen 4 and 5 were kind of lacking, but this is really back to that Gen 3 style and that Gen 2 and 1 style where it's, like, really good. So I just kind of want them to keep the hype of this alive, you know, keep going with this. I, I, I need my Pokemon to be more like this and then just expand on it for in the future. Maybe make the trees look better as people shut up about that and can actually just talk about the game next time, you know, or whatever. But, uh, so yeah, I think it's great. I would probably give it like a, I'd probably just give it like a nine out of 10 because I think it's, it's really good and it's a lot of fun. Um, but let's, uh, I think the wild is great edition. I think the music is really good. I think, the way the game is structured, how you can get through the story pretty fast, is 
cool, but also I can see where people would be like, the story's too short, this and that. I think add a few extra optional dungeons for people who want to do that kind of thing. I think that would be really cool. Uh, put it in your next wild area. Keep Continue this wild area because that is a significantly great idea. The only other thing I would say besides the dungeons, the optional dungeons, maybe maybe make the dungeons, uh, you know, level, level restricted like you did with the Pokemon. Take out the Pokemon level restriction for some of the Pokemon. Make the really big ones level restricted. Get that. That's fine. Uh, add three legendary roaming Pokemon or, you know, those kind of birds or anything like that add those to the game and that would be great fix your fossils can we see what the fossils look like as a real form next time like or something like in a few generations please because i, I want to see what they actually look like and not just their shitty joke forms or whatever um other than that i think the games are great i give them like a 9 out of 10 like i said uh pretty great all right let's talk about the new pokemon so uh oops so, first of all, Grookey, I think that's um, my favorite of the three starters. I like Score Bunny a lot, I especially like Score Bunny's shiny form. Obviously, Score Bunny's very orange, but this is the one that I started with. This is the one that I like a lot. So, Grookey is my man. Uh, very cool design. We got uh, Thwacky, who is fine. He's a good uh, middle evolution. We got Rillaboom. Who is a great uh, final evolution. I think he's really cool. He was one of my favorite Pokemon uh, going through the games. So we have uh, we got Score Bunny here. He's great. He's got a lot of energy. I, I definitely like this line's uh, animations. I think that they definitely uh, did a good job on these. So very cool there. Um, Rabu is that his name, right? Yep. Yeah, um, he's pretty cool. Definitely um, not as cool as Thwacky. I think Thwacky is the better middle evolution, but uh, you're only doing this to get to Cinderace, who is probably the coolest of the three uh, evolution, final evolution ones. So um, let's go over to Sobble. Sobble's uh, fine. You know, he's pretty good, but, uh, you know, he's cute and everything. But I don't know if I'd necessarily like his two evolutions because... Uh, the final evolution is very strange. I think it's, I think it's a little bit underrated. I think it's all right. I don't think it's amazing or anything, but I, I think they definitely could have uh, improved this because generally the water Pokemon are pretty cool. They're generally the ones that are the overrated ones. Uh, you know, the frog one, um, Greninja or whatever. Fuck, fucking very overrated. Um, the uh, what is this called again? Or beetle. The or beetle line is awesome, and I'm glad that there's like a ladybug Pokemon at the end of it, just because you know miraculous ladybug and all that. So I thought that was really cool. Um, and then you got the you know you get the Butterfree line, the Grubbin line, which were in the last game, the Noctowl line. Uh, okay, the Corviknight line um, is very cool. They're your typical bird starter, um, but Steel typing was actually really helpful this generation for there being a lot of fairies and stuff. Um, I definitely think that they're a really cool, um, set of Pokemon. We got, what is this thing called? Squovet, the squirrel Pokemon. I, I actually had one of these on my team. Uh, I think, yep, this is the one, Sandy, my, uh, Squovet for, like, the first, I don't know, while of this thing. And, a uh, Squovet, I don't know what the other one is, but, um, these things are alright. I think they're pretty cool. They're, they're like the new Raticate, which is neat. Um, definitely a, a nice line. You got the Pidove line from Gen 5. There's a lot of Gen 5 Pokemon in this game, which, which is kind of annoying. Um, since Gen 5 is probably my, one of my least favorite generations, other than Gen, Generation 7. Um, Generation 7 has some good Pokemon, but Gen 5 was, you know, um, kind of lacking on those. They weren't terrible, though. The Nicket line is actually pretty, pretty dope. Uh, so... Oh yeah, and of course I named mine Rena, as in Rena Rouge from Ladybug, so very cool. Uh, you got the okay. So, so these are actually new. These are the Zigzagoon uh, Galarian forms. Can I do that? Well, okay, yeah. Which are new forms of Zigzagoon? I think that was an interesting Pokemon to choose for new forms. Um, good enough. I mean, you know, we didn't really have a lot of Gen three different forms before, so that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, you got the. Uh, 
I named mine Vincent because, you know, Catherine. Uh, the Wulu Wul Lion. And then, uh, Dubwool, yeah. Um, the Low Tab line, which are actually Shield exclusive, so it took me a long time to get a hold of those. Um, the Shift Tree line. And then, okay, you got, um, these two, Chutile and the other one, uh, which are pretty good water types for this generation. They're kind of like, you know, the new, um, Turtle Pokemon or whatnot. The Bolton line is actually really, uh, Yamper and Bolton. They're actually really great, uh, new Pokemon. And, of course, Electric type is one of my favorite types, so I thought that was really cool that they added that. Um, a lot of plant Pokemon, a lot of old Pokemon, yeah. The Nine Tails line, that's cool that they had that, and the Arcanine line in here. Those are classic Pokemon, of course. Now, Delibird, like I said, is, why, why have this in here? Like, if you're not going to do something with it, give it a new form. I mean, give it, like, a like a really icy-looking form or something like you did with Mr. Mime and, like, a bunch of other Pokemon. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, you could use that instead of the, you know, Ice Q or whatever, the stupid penguin Pokemon that nobody likes. Um, so, yeah. You know, we just got a lot of returning Pokemon, which are pretty cool. The Zay 2 line, yeah. Those are old school. Gen 2. Um, all the Hitmon Pokemon, which was an interesting choice. The the gear Pokemon. I mean, I guess you needed the... Um, it's a pretty good variety, though, of old Pokemon, you know, um, uh, to, to, to put in here. I think the variety is nice. I think that's what's cool about this game is you don't have to catch all of the stupid Pokemon again that are just like the really bad ones, but you still have a good variety of the old Pokemon to kind of sample Pokemon, especially for the new people who are just coming into the series. Um, now, there's a good history of Pokemon in here. You have the Guard of War line, of course, and then um, there's also stuff like Skunk Tank, though. Like, why, why is this in here? You know, like, come on now. We don't need, we don't need that in here. That's, there's no point for that. Um, the Dusclops and Duskull line is pretty good. The Machamp line. Of course, the uh, Hunter Ghastly line. The uh, the Gengar, you know, and all that. <laughs> of course, you gotta have Magikarp and, and uh, Gyarados, which are awesome. But uh, The Feebass line is another good one. <laughs> I think this is a new Pokemon, right? This seems like this should have been like from Alola or something. I don't know why, but it just kind of stands out as not... Maybe that is the one that's from Alola. I don't remember. It just kind of stands out as an odd Pokemon. The Sizzlepede line, which are kind of rare in this game. Um, a neat enough Pokemon line. You know, kind of being like fire Pokemon or whatever, which is not like one of my favorite types. I know I don't keep saying that, but uh, fire and electric really are like two of my favorite types. You know, the Noivern line, I'm a little partial to uh, Noibat because it was one of my first shinies. Um, and it's also my birthday Pokemon, 714. So I think that's pretty cool. Love, love, uh, Noi Bat. Noi, Noi Vern, though, is a little less uh, cool. This is a new, like, fish Pokemon. I don't know. He's he's alright. He, he, he needs, like, an evolution. Wait, does he have an evolution? Is this his evolution? Okay, I was gonna say, maybe this is his evolution. I was gonna say, like, he needs an evolution if he doesn't have one, but, yeah. Okay. We've got new Meowth line, um, you know, and then you have to still catch Persian, which is kind of, like, a hard thing to do, because you have to trade one of the other... This is a new Pokemon, too, by the way, per or scared or whatever um which is kind of cool they're, they're not bad the the milsery and um the al creamy line which is an interesting evolution oh that's something i forgot to talk about was cooking i think that's a cool new feature is the cooking feature because uh you get first of all uh the online you you have a bunch of people running around and stuff every time you talk to these people it's like you get new items for your cooking stuff and it's like oh cool that's great and then uh as you cook and as you do the whole curry decks or whatever, you get more toys to play with your Pokemon and your Pokemon camp. And I think Pokemon camp is a really cool idea because it's like uh, like the Pokemon and me or whatever from Generation 6 and 7. And also, um, you get to see your Pokemon close up and then you get to cook food and you have that little mini game, which is a lot, it's, it's a lot of fun. And you also just like, you know, you want to improve yourself. That makes berries... Um, have purpose and whatever, which is really cool. So I think that's really, uh, really neat. Uh, the whole cooking mechanic heals you and all that, and it gives your Pokemon experience. I thought it was really cool. So uh, let's. Oh shoot. Let's see. So they have a bunch of new stuff. You got all the evolutions, like I said. 
the uh, Apple in line. I mean, like they're cool and all, but they're not very uh, good. Apple Ton, and then my favorite would be the last one, which is uh, Flapple. It's a stupid name, but um, the Pokemon's kind of cool. I like how their shiny forms are just the green ver- green Apple versions. I think that's really cool. Uh, I love Esper and Meowstic. They're some of my favorites from Gen 6. Um, definitely great Pokemon. So the Surfetch. Okay, so like also Wobbuffet and Why Not are in here. That's a really stupid choice. The Surfet- um, Surfetched and Galarian Farfetched are really cool. I think that's a great evolution to Farfetched. Um, we've been asking for that for a long time. I like that Chinchu and um, Lantern made a return because those are some of my favorite Pokemon. A lot of my favorite Pokemon are in this game, which is, is great. And uh, Okay, another thing. Why put Shuckle in here if Shuckle isn't going to have an evolution? You know what I'm saying? Like, this is ridiculous. Come on. That's what I'm saying. you got to give these things an evolution. So, Cursula and Corsula. Cor- Corsula and Cursula. Sorry, this is Cursula. That was Corsula. Um, are pretty cool. I think that was an interesting typing to do the ghost thing and all that. Well, here's the three um, three new imp guys, which are pretty neat. Like, all the new Pokemon are, are like, really actually pretty good, other than, like, Ice Cube. <laughs> Who even then is like, eh, he's just a meh, you know. So, the Galarian wheezing, like, why? I don't know. You tell me. But, yeah. Oh, by the way, wasted my Master Ball on this thing by accident. Fucking hate it. Let's see. Yep, you can see right there that I wasted my Master Ball on it. I called it Wasted because I wasted my Master Ball on it. Actually, I turned over my Master Ball from uh, Shield, though, so that's pretty cool. Um, Yeah, I don't know. There's just, like, a bunch of... It, it, they just have like a bunch of weird Gen Five Pokemon, like uh, like the Volby. Uh, come on, like the Volby lion in there and stuff. It's just like why, why are we doing this? You know, like why? But like this Chandelure lion is pretty cool. I, I definitely like him as a Gen Five Pokemon. So like some of the Gen Five were okay. Of course, my boy Maractus in there. You know, one of my favorites. So. I think I feel like they had a pretty good, pretty good mix of stuff. Qfant and uh, Caparaja, which is awesome. The uh, oh yeah, I forgot about this. <laughs> the bird Cramorant or whatever. He's interesting. And then the was it Toxidrill line or whatever? Yeah, Tox Toxer Toxel. Yeah, pretty cool. New uh. Any snake Pokemon, Silicobra, or whatever. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Sandaconda. Yep, Sandaconda. Yeah. But, yeah. Oh, yeah, new new form for this, too. Like, what? What? You know, like, for Yamask or whatever from Gen 5. Even Gen 5 got new forms. It's like, it's crazy. The Ponyta and uh, Galarian Rapidash. Those are awesome. Those are some of my favorites. Sinistee. And Poltegeist, which are also some of my favorites. Love those. Those are, those are great. Oh, even, uh... God, fucking Turtonator. Or Pico is pretty cool. Especially with Marnie and all that. Uh, even the Snom line, I was going to say, is uh, two pretty cool Pokemon there. Especially with them being pretty rare or whatever. Oh, this is the new one. Not the last one. Right? Isn't that it? Is this the new one or the other one? They're so hard to tell apart. They should be related somehow. I don't understand that. Why aren't they related? And then... Yeah, the new Mr. Mime is cool. And then... Um, like, Mr. Mime himself, the new Galarian form is awesome. You got the new Darmanitan line. I think they were also Gen 4, right? You got Stone Journer, who's pretty cool. Ice Q, eh, he's a, he's a very meh Pokemon. This is a pretty cool one, he's, especially his Dynamax form. Uh, this guy is awesome. So, cool new Pokemon. These guys are, are just the strangest thing. Like, look at that. He, he looks like he, he, I want to die, you know? Like, look at that. Fuck. Like, that's just sad, man. Look at this shit. It's crazy. Anyway, I think that's most of the new Pokemon. 
Um, other than the oh the dreepy lion, those are pretty cool. Dreepy. Yeah. Oh yeah, I like how this one he's got he's got the little dreepy just like on top there. That's kind of cool. And then dragapult. And then the two legendaries, three legendaries that is. Yep. So yeah, I mean overall there's a lot of cool new Pokemon. I really like that. The whole game is uh, really great, like I said before. I totally recommend it. I think it's well worth its uh, $60 that it's going to probably stay at for a long time. So uh, definitely get one of the games. I, mean, I would recommend probably Sword. I think that's the better one of the two. But Shield has some cool Pokemon with it too. Uh, the Gumi line especially. But you're going to be able to surprise trade a lot of that, especially if you're going to be uh, grinding for Shinies. Uh, but... I think the new Pokemon games are great. I think you should play them if you haven't already. And if, if you're giving in the hype that they're terrible, fuck that shit. Go get them yourself. Play them. I think they're the best games since Generation 3. Uh, I gave them a 9 out of 10. So you should play them too. And uh, here's look into the future. I, I can't imagine what's next. I, I can only speculate. I mean, Generation 4 remakes. I would personally really like a let's go uh johto <laughs> set of games i don't know what the two pokemon would be that they would use i was thinking like eevee like we could do eevee um umbreon and sylveon or something like they would just have to evolve into those pokemon or something like that i don't know it, it'd be kind of interesting but maybe that's one of the reasons that they haven't done it yet but they say that they have no plans to do it but i really would like my friend to um he you know his level of Pokemon playing is Let's Go, so, like, if we could get a Johto Let's Go, that would be great, because that's, like, my favorite fucking generation. And they've already got all of Kanto made for, uh, for the Kanto half of, uh, of, uh, Johto Let's Go, so, there you go. That'd be pretty cool. I'd really love to see that. But anyway, uh, yeah, this game's great. Go get them. Uh, I've got the guide here as well, which showed up way too late. Uh, I don't know what the fuck happened with that, but... This has been Jay-Z NES uh, saying keep it classic and play some Pokemon. Stick around for more reviews, underrated games, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Jay-Z.